Hey everyone, the OKest Gamer here. Today we're going to be looking at the process of cloning your SSD, as well as a device teardown and swapping out your SSD. If you don't need to clone your SSD, see the video description and jump ahead. Today we're going to look at the process of cloning your SSD to a new SSD. There's various reasons you may want to do this. It could be that your current SSD is failing and you need to change to a new one, or maybe you're just looking to increase the storage capability of your device. Whatever the reason, we're going to look at a simple way to get this done. So first we're going to look at some software. I've chosen to go with EaseUS. It is paid software, but it's very easy to use and it comes in at a low cost. The next you're going to need is a SSD, obviously. And then you're going to need an M2 enclosure so you can connect your SSD to your device. Now the particular enclosure I have required power delivery, so I've had to use a USB-C adapter here that also is capable of power delivery. I did try to do this without, but I found that it wasn't recognizing the device uh, whenever I would open the EaseUS software. For the rest of the video, we're gonna switch over to my capture card. It should be a little bit easier for everyone to follow along. Okay, moving on over to the capture card. Here we got the EaseUS website. So we're gonna need to go to the top. There's a tab that says Partition Manager and then you're going to want to go down to disk copy. So you have two options to buy now or the free trial. The free trial is a little bit deceiving. It's just a demo that you can see what the process would look like, but you don't get to execute. So we're going to click buy now. Now you see the, the different prices here, different options. Uh, it shows Canadian here for me, but uh, it's 1990 USD for the monthly. So I would recommend doing monthly if you're going to pick one of these, just because you can do the basically do the swap and then forget about it. You're probably not going to need this anymore. So we're going to go back. Now we're going to select free trial and it's going to download an installer for us. And then we're just going to run that. Okay. We're going to click install now. Now this will just take a few minutes, so I'll come back after it's done. Okay, now that the software is installed, I'm going to click Start Now. It's going to pop up an advertisement uh, if you haven't already purchased, so just ignore that. So here's where you're going to need to put in your license key. If you've purchased, you should get an email. So I'm just going to take, take a minute here to put mine in. Okay, we're going to click activate now. Okay, now that we're activated, here's the software. It's fairly straightforward to use. First, you need to select your source disk, which is going to be disk zero. And you can see there it has your device name. So once we've done that, we're going to click next. Then we're going to see disk one as our, uh, our destination device. So we're going to click that, press next. There's a few options here. You can take a look at, uh, I just did adjust the disc. You can do copy, uh, where it'll copy exactly and then have some unallocated space left on the SSD. So it doesn't really matter what you pick. I decided just to auto fit the device. So we're gonna click that. Make sure that you check this one box on the left here. There's one that says check if destination is a SSD, so you want to click that because it'll make the process go a little bit faster. And then we're going to run it. So this could take some time, so we'll come back after this is completed. Okay, it looks like we're finally finished. Um, it only took six hours, so expect a quite, quite a long uh, time for this to complete. So make sure that you're doing it when you have lots of time. So we're just going to hit finish. And it looks like we're done. So we're just gonna close this, shut down, and begin the teardown process to replace the SSD. On the prototype, it was very, very challenging to get this open. There was some issues with the side rail screws here. Uh, they were extremely tight, and I actually had to drill out a couple of them 
because they were spinning in place. Uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue for most because uh, there have been other people that have taken this apart and not said anything about that. Uh, so it could be specific to my prototype. Okay, anyway, let's let's go into it. So there's six screws on the back you're gonna wanna remove. I've already removed them for this video, but uh, there's one here, here, basically just evenly along the back. Just don't forget this one that's under the kickstand. It will be under a warranty sticker, so you'll need to remove that to get in. There is four on each rail, so those basically evenly spread across. Under this sticker, you're gonna to need to remove this and don't lose the sticker, it's very important to keep because this prevents the pogo pins on the controller from getting stuck. So I'm just gonna show you that you can just lift it. I'm gonna leave it in there for now. I did remove the screw under there, so uh, you'll want to remove that, put it aside safely. When you reassemble, make sure to put it back. Same thing on the other side, there's a little sticker here. You'll wanna lift that, keep it safe, put it back when you're done, and then remove the four screws. So you've got six screws on the back. You've got four on each side. Then for the top and bottom plates, they're actually, it looks a little more rough taking it apart than it really is. You just need to maybe catch a nail here. You can use a pick if you want, but just lift it up and just very slowly go along. Don't overly do it. It sometimes helps to pick here, pick here, kind of alternate sides and you'll be able to get it out without any damage. And sometimes I like to pop the other side as well, just to make sure that we're not getting any extra resistance. So I'll take care of these last two. And the plastic's quite, uh, quite flexible, so it looks like I'm reefing on it, but I'm really not. So once you take the bottom, the bottom one off, there is going to be two screws. There's one here and one here. This also was another screw that I had to drill out because it was spinning. So I do need to replace that. So you'll want to take this one out. That will happen because of the magnets. So it's kind of handy if you don't want to lose it, if you accidentally drop it. And I've already taken that one out, so we're not going to bother with that. For the top, very similar process to the bottom. Just want to catch a nail here. Same thing on the other side. Now that they're both lifted, just go along slowly. If you want to help it out, you can use a pick and just, just gently go along the edge. Um, these do come out super easy, so I'm just going to do this back and forth. So one there, one there, they kind of crisscross. This one's a little bit tighter here. Okay. okay, now that we've got that off, we'll put that aside. You're gonna see this little button cluster here. So you're just gonna lift that up and put it aside. It just lays on some pins or posts, I'll call them. And there's one screw here and one screw here. Um, okay, now that we've got all these screws off, you're going to want to lift the back off. Now, when I'm lifting it off, it looks like it comes out very easily. That is because of the work I had to do off camera. Um, it is a bit of a struggle. There's no ribbon cables on the inside here, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can just set that aside. And then you're in the device. So I already unplugged the battery, but there's normally a clip right here. It's just a little metal clip that has this little screw that is right here. So I've already taken that out. So don't mind me, I did put it aside and I just misplaced it for a second. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to unplug the battery. So there's a little, it's, it's basically a press down ribbon cable. So I've already popped it up, but what you want to do is come around here and just kind of clip it just gently and then make sure that it's lifted up and not making contact. Next thing we're going to want to do is take off the fan. 
there's just three screws. There's two different sizes. So these, these two over here are a little bit longer. And then a shorter one over here. Just like that. I'm not sure if you can see that. So the shorter one would just come over here where there's a little bit less plastic to go through. Next thing we're gonna need to do is lift up the tape. You could leave it fixed to the metal vents here and just take it off the fan like this. Just set up there. Now this is loose. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna bother unplugging it under there. I'm just gonna put it to the side. All right, the next thing is we're gonna to need to take off this one screw for the speaker. We'll lift the speaker out. There we go. We'll just put this over here. So this board over here, this is what connects to the two rails for the controllers. And then I believe this goes to the main board. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug those. All right. So there's two screws to remove this little board here. So we'll put those aside. And we'll also remove this board and put that aside. All right, next we can remove this plate. There are, I believe, three screws holding it down. There's one on the left here. So right here. Sometimes these screws don't want to lift up, so it's fine. Just loosen them. It'll come up with the plate. See, this one didn't want to lift out. There's a second one on the right side here. Same thing. It does not want to lift up, so we're going to lift it with the plate. And there's a third one hidden in the corner here. I'm not sure if you can see that. So we're just going to unscrew that. And it looks like this one's going to come out. Nope, never mind. All right, so we should be able to lift the plate. So just be careful. These edges can be a little bit sharp. Um, not so much for cutting your finger, but just in case there's any ribbon cables or wires, there are some wires over here. All right, so we'll set this aside. Screws are still in it, so I'm just going to leave them there. Okay, now we have access to the SSD, and also here's the heat sink. For replacing your SSD, it's very simple. Again, just make sure your battery is disconnected. And there's a single screw here. Put that aside. And you see how this pops up? Just lift it, pull it out. And you can take this sticker off and place it on your replacement SSD. It's got a little bit of copper on there. Uh, I probably will do a mini heat sink when I put mine in, um, but I'm gonna be doing that when the camera's off. I'll just be putting it in uh, because I'm gonna be doing a few things in here. So let's just pretend that this is my hard drive. So when you're taking your replacement one, you put the sticker on the new one, take it or your heat sink if you're doing that. And just slot it in here gently. It's only really one way it can go, so now it's in. Press it down to make sure it's in there. And then you're gonna take your screw. And you're just gonna secure it back in. Okay, so I've put my SSD in. Uh, I do have a little heat sink here. I'll leave a, a link in the description for you guys if you're interested in purchasing as well. Uh, I haven't tried this yet with the shield. I'm assuming it's going to fit, but it may be a little bit tight. So we will find out. So we're going to go ahead and put this down. One thing, just, uh, just like I had warned in the beginning, uh, you got to watch out for the edges of this thing. They are a little bit sharp. 
not a cutting yourself hazard, but if you hit the hit one of the ribbon cables in the wrong way. And another thing to note is uh, while you're doing this, before you put anything down, just make sure that all the cables that you need at the top are out. All right, let's see how this fits with the heat sink. Seems to fit fine. Then we're gonna take our speaker. There's a little track over here you can put it in. We'll replace that back in. I'll put this wire on the other side of that pole. And we can start to secure things. So first we'll start with putting the shield back down. So there should be three screws. I believe I left them in here. There we go. And one thing I'll note is in a different device uh, that I had done something similar, I, I noticed that some of the poles that these are, or the posts that these are going down to are a little bit, can be a little bit frail. So don't over tighten, just make sure you're just doing enough to hold it down, but nothing more. All right, and there's our one speaker for our, sorry, our one screw for our speaker over here. And then there is one last screw I have here, um, but again, I need to locate where I put the uh, the thing for the battery here. Um, it's not necessary, but it's just a safety precaution to make sure that the battery doesn't come out. Uh, so this one screw I'm gonna put aside for now. Okay, so we can go ahead and put our controller board down. Put our two screws in. All right, so now that we've got that in, we can put the battery back on. So it's just a press down connection. So I like to use one of these plastic picks. So once you have that in, the next thing you're going to want to do is, I haven't located where I put it, but there is a little metal clip here that will lay across here. And it's just, it'll lay across the plastic right to this other little post here. And what it does is it just prevents the battery from, uh, cable from popping up just in case. Uh, so it's just a precaution. Uh, I'm going to leave it for now uh, for the sake of this video. And I will put it in once I figure out where I put it down. All right, so we're gonna put this in. Just put it underneath the tape here. Make sure it's lined up. All right, so we're gonna put our three screws back in. So the longer ones are gonna come on the bottom here. All right, so assuming you had this uh, here, you would be now, you'd have everything back together. We would just put the tape down. Just make sure that it's making contact across and then it just folds around like that. And there you have it. Now you have your device uh, put back together, at least internally. Now you'll just need to put the case back on. Uh, so for that, basically take the disassembly that, uh, that I had shown and just play it in reverse. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the controller teardown and some gameplay footage.